Hi, and welcome back to this Monday edition of Focal Point on AFR Talk. I'm Brian Fisher, your congenial, convivial, and uh, amiable, as always, so it's an honor to welcome to our Focal Point studio, Robert Stacy McCain, is a blogger. I've read a lot of his stuff frequently. I read his material. Uh, excellent writer, a lot of insight. He uh, served as an executive editor, assistant editor for the Washington Times. He's now with the theothermccain.com, a blog post where you can read his stuff regularly and also writes for American Spectator. You can find his work there at spectator.org. Robert Stacy McCain. Stacy, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Great to be here, Brian. Well, Stacy, let's talk about the fact that you are based in Washington, D.C. That's where you kind of operate, so that's kind of your native habitat. Now, here you are, all the way from Washington, D.C., hanging out in Mississippi. What in the world would be important enough to bring a pundit of your stature to the wilds of Mississippi? Well, of course, it's the Senate primary, uh, the Republican Senate primary, uh, where uh, Chris McDaniel, a Tea Party-backed challenger, a conservative challenger, is taking on Republican Senator Thad McCochran. Thad now, Cochran. I said McCochran. Yeah. Now, this is obviously, we've been following this race. We've had Senator McDaniel on frequently as a guest on this program. We've invited Senator Cochran. Every time we've invited Senator McDaniel to come on the program, we've invited Senator Cochran to come on. He's never responded to uh, an invitation. Senator McDaniel has graciously accepted the invitation every time we've extended it. We had him on just on on Friday. But obviously, there's been a tremendous amount of national attention focused on this race. Uh, We've had some Tea Party victories in Texas in the lieutenant governor's race, attorney general's race. This is considered another opportunity for sort of grassroots conservatives. If you want to use the Tea Party label, whatever. But for grassroots conservatives with a champion that they have, like Chris McDaniel, to unseat a long-term incumbent like Senator Thad Cochran. So tell us why, from your vantage point as a conservative observer, how important is this election for the conservative cause? Well, this is uh, probably the best chance uh, for uh, you know the Tea Party or, as you say, the conservative grassroots to knock off an incumbent Republican in this cycle, you know, they a lot of people were disappointed that they couldn't uh, defeat Mitch McConnell, you know, the Senate Majority Leader, and and so defeating Thad uh, Thad Cochran, uh, you know, the polls have shown all year long that Cochran was vulnerable, 42 years in Washington, and you know, the question is, can the Tea Party still make a difference? Can they still drive a, a conservative message in the electoral arena? And so so this is a crucial test for them, and, and they're going all in. Now, let me ask you this question. Would you, as you look at uh, Senator, State Senator McDaniel and uh, Senator Thad Cochran, who's got a record of 41 years in, in D.C., uh, how would you summarize the the distinctions, the distinctives that you see between these two candidates as an observer? What seems to you to be the main thing that distinguishes these two candidates from each other? Well, like all uh, people in the Tea Party movement especially, uh, McDaniel emphasizes the Constitution, emphasizes financial restraint. And the thing that McDaniel, the theme he keeps hitting is that the most conservative state in the country deserves the most conservative senator in the country. And they don't have that. Thad Cochran, you know, compared to some other Republicans even, is conservative, but he's not as conservative as he could be. And most of all, he's not stood up as a leader in the way that Ted Cruz uh, and Mike Lee from Utah have stood up as leaders and and challenging the Obama agenda. You know, one thing that's impressed me in my conversations with Senator McDaniel is is how frequently he does reference the Constitution. I remember attended one event where he was being asked about education, the Department of Education, and I've heard a lot of people uh, in public office talk about, well, the federal government, it's too big. We don't need to increase the bureaucracy. We don't need to spend money on that. We ought to be about local control. But you bring that up with Senator McDaniel, and the thing that he will point you to is you go to Article 1, Section 8, which outlines the powers of action that we the people have given to the federal government. He says, look, education is not in there. You can't find education in Article 1, Section 8, so we should abolish the Department of Education because it's not an authorized activity of the federal government. 
And so that's an example where he will continue to bring the debate back to the issue of the Constitution. You know, and one question I think a lot of people have, I'm talking here with Robert Stacy McCain of the other McCain.org and Spectator.org, American Spectator, is um, the issue of what is going to happen when a guy gets back to D.C. Now, nobody's counting chickens or making a prediction or anything of that sort because the polling data I've seen indicates that the, these candidates are running pretty much neck and neck. But, you know, Senator McDaniel has said, look, I get back to D.C., I'm going to run with the Rand Pauls, I'm going to run with the Mike Lees, I'm going to run uh, with the Ted Cruz's. Those are the guys I'm going to hang with. Those are the guys that think like I think. Those are the guys I want to help uh, move a conservative agenda forward in, in D.C. Just from your vantage point, what you see, what you hear, what you notice about Chris McDaniel, a lot of people, you know, have sent politicians back to D.C. and then they get disappointed because they get Potomac fever, they drink the water, and the guy that campaigned, you know, I've had people sitting right here in this studio making all these brave promises of what they would do if they got back to D.C., and then you get disappointed because you don't, there doesn't seem to be the follow-through, the level of conviction doesn't seem to be there. What's your assessment about Chris McDaniel from what you've seen? If he is elected and is sent back to, to, to D.C., do you think he will do what he's told voters that he would do? Yes, I, I absolutely, because he's, you know, he has staked his claim on, on the conservative message and has been supported. He knows who his voters are, and he knows that the Republican establishment doesn't want him in there, okay? And so uh, he knows who his friends are, and he knows who his friends aren't. And so so I think that, uh, yes, I think he can be counted on, and you know, to keep his word, because he has been a conservative leader, as I'm sure you know, even here in Mississippi, in terms of taking on Haley Barber, um, over uh, things like property rights and eminent domain, where you know Barber didn't want to push that, and they pushed it anyways, and he was uh, part of a, a crop of younger and um, uh, more dynamic conservatives who were elected in the state legislature, and he helped you know he helped lead the way here in Mississippi, and I think he can be counted on to do that if he's elected Tuesday to the Senate. Now, one of the realities that even the media has made a, a made a point of observing, I mean, the Clarion Ledger, largest newspaper in Mississippi, has faulted Senator Cochran for this. CNN, Dana Bash, talk about, talked about Senator Cochran pulling a bait and switch on her. He's try, she was trying to track him down for an interview. He pretended to leave in one car, ducked out the back way. So Senator Cochran has gone to a considerable amount of effort to avoid interviews with the, with the mainstream media. He has steadfastly refused even an editorial interview with the uh, Clarion Ledger, and he has refused adamantly to debate Senator Co uh, McDaniel. He's refused invitations to come on this program. Uh, it, it, as voters are trying to assess and weigh that out, how much significance should a voter attach to the fact that Senator Cochran seems to be unwilling to engage in debate the fact that he is avoiding reporters, he will not debate. Uh, as Rick Santorum said when he came to town on Saturday, he said that that what you've got here is that they're trying to play hide the ball. Uh, you know, or, or it's like the four corners, the old four corners in basketball, you know, where they're trying to run out the clock and avoid um, answering difficult questions. Uh, you know, and there are some questions that reporters might want to ask Thad, Thad Cochran, and uh, I don't think he wants to answer those questions. And so, yes, he's avoiding debate. He's avoiding um, talking to reporters. And I saw a video of him uh, where he was explaining why he wouldn't debate, and even his explanation of why he wouldn't debate was, you know, it was comical. I mean, because he's obviously not prepared. I mean, you know, I, I don't think he expected this kind of challenge uh, that he's gotten. Two more questions for you. Talking here with Robert Stacy McCain of the other McCain.org, also writes for American Spectator at Spectator.org. This is a primary election. Turnout in primary elections traditionally low, maybe 20% of the electorate show up. Uh, so it seems to be a primary election is an election that can be affected by motivated voters that really have a reason to show up. How much of a, an advantage do you think that will be for Senator McDaniel? Do you think there will be enough momentum there for him actually to win, uh, win tomorrow? Uh, incumbents obviously have a tremendous amount of 
a number of advantages. They've got name ID. They've been around for a long time. He's brought money to Mississippi. Now, what's your assessment looking at this as an observer? What are the chances that Chris McDaniel has to pull off an upset tomorrow? Yeah, I th- I think there's a definite chance that he could win, and and the reason why there's a chance is because, you know, as you say, it's a low turnout race. This is interested voters, and. When you look at the polls, the important thing to, you know, everyone looks at the head-to-head numbers, okay? And right now there's, you know, it's back and forth a little bit and it's hard to tell. But the key thing to look at is that Thad Cochran is not past 45% in any of the recent polling. In other words, if the incumbent is below 50 in a poll, uh, this is almost certain death, you know, because the, the... uh, undecided voters tend to break toward the challenger because if you wanted to vote for Thad Cochran, well, he's there. You know who Thad Cochran is. What the voters have needed to answer, the question they need to answer for themselves is, who is Chris McDaniel? Can I trust uh, Chris McDaniel? And so what he's trying to do in these closing days is to close the deal and then to get the people who support him to call up their friends, their neighbors, their family members and say, hey, have you voted? That turnout game is going to be absolutely essential. One last question, talking here with Robert Stacy McCain. we got about a minute left, uh, Stacy. One last question. What would uh, – well, we got about 30 seconds left now. The music has started. What would a McDaniel upset win tomorrow? What would that mean to the conservative movement? 30 seconds. That it would mean – that the Tea Party is alive and well and still able to take on the concerted power of the establishment in Washington, not only in the Republican Party, but in the Democrat Party as well. Our guest has been Robert Stacy McCain. He writes at theothermccain.org, also writes for American Spectator, spectator.org. I read a lot of what Stacy has written, a good guy to read, very insightful, good writer. Uh, Stacy, thanks for uh, taking time to drop by and uh, see us, and we'll see how things turn out tomorrow. Thank you very much, All right. Brian. Focal Point AFR Talk. We'll be right back with more after these messages. Stay with us. Focal Point AFR Talk. If you're looking for information on what's happening in the culture war and how it will impact your family, you can spend hours searching 